2004 or 5, some big uh, like a timber companies, they have been arriving to the place where I come from and they have been buying all the longest living trees from the rainforest. Yeah. At that time it was like a, like a good opportunity for them to sell a lot of trees, but what happened after like a, a year or two years? So more, no more chance to get wood from the trees because all, most of all the trees have been cut down by those big timber companies. Yeah. This is a low budget documentary that gets behind the scenes of the reality of life for people living and working in the rainforest. So it kind of shows the effects of climate change in a very real way in this quite casual style that I really liked. Um, I like the way that you hear from the, the filmmaker at the beginning, kind of explaining to the interviewee what the point of the film is. I think that's quite an effective way to explain a bit of the ethos behind the film without using subtitles or anything like that. Um, just hearing it directly from them was really effective. Um, yeah, and I think it's just got, yeah, this very relaxed style to it. Um, which just feels, it feels very real, it feels very natural. What we have here is experts who know more than anyone else how this environment is changing to its detriment. And why are they experts? Because they work in it every day. These are workers who have an intimate relationship with the forest and the jungles around them and who recognize that there has been a sizable change throughout the years of their employment and not for the better and that these declines will continue if certain regulations continue to be sustained that are insustainable so it's really striking of course when we hear from scientists and you know, uh, schooled experts, but it's also great to hear from people who experience and work in this environment every single day. That's what's most striking about this piece for me. This is for Tambo Pata. This is a Peruvian nature's paradise. Um, I loved how we see in this documentary the daily task at preserving uh, these efforts with testimonials on how they are able to see firsthand all the negative impacts of climate change in different aspects from duration of the dry season, the mating seasons, the availability of animals to procure their own good quality food uh, all year round, and these cat catastrophic consequences of indiscriminate logging practices that I loved how they pinpoint that a lot of this can fall into the consumer's end and the responsibility of identifying the practices behind the products we, we buy. And I, I wish more people knew this and really put at, paid attention to this, how the consumer really defines what the manufacturers do and where they source their ingredients and how ethic they are on that end. I loved it. I, I loved everyone showcased there. I like to see their own uh, little paradise on earth and I, I do hope we get to preserve it. Tambo Pata. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I really liked how this film began. They gave you a lot of information up front. They let you know what was going on and it was really important information. You didn't feel overwhelmed. But the remainder of the film, I kind of felt like it was unfinished. Um, and the subject matter is so, so important that it was just, it was missing a couple of things like um, music to underscore it would, I think, have lifted it a lot. I liked the interviews, but I wish the girl who was interviewing them, she was mic'd or they actually did text underneath because it was very hard to hear the questions that she was asking them before they answered. Um, I liked the subject matter. Yeah. And I think that it was important and I think this was a really good job. In the short film, Tambo Pata, we get to see this reserve. Uh, located in the Peruvian Amazon, we have this national reserve that is 
biologically the most diverse forests in the world. And so therefore it has to be the most protected. And we get to see this essentially indigenous insight to this community. Um, it is sort of really known for this part of the world to be uh, really beautiful. And therefore within its beauty, it has dangers that exist within it because it is the most uh, diverse of all of its experiences. And so we get to see this insight of the people who get to take care of this part of the planet and uh, their fight to, uh, you know, really keep these pockets of the world in their natural habitat because when they go uh, little to no untouched by human population, it really helps create the substance of the world, right? It creates the oxygen that we breathe. And so when we leave certain pockets of the world alone, we really get to thrive in those atmospheres. And so we get to see these different output outlooks from, you know, mothers who are taking care of their daughters, these young gentlemen that are, um, you know, just being so delicate with the world that they walk on. You know, it's a nice appreciation for this planet um, that we get to see this relationship with humans versus, uh, you know, nurture and nature. And so rather than taking this nurturing aspect, we kind of get to have this connection with nature and have this appreciation with nature and, uh, you know, get to grow this need and care to protect these things because it's important to who we are and who we're going to be.